First off, um, I do want. Well, I'd like to say the devil. There's some pretty amazing stuff on there. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. I'm a pretty big fan of the record. And it's, Thank you. I've set it on repeat while I do my stuff on my computer. I just throw it on my top screen and just let iTunes roll. It's awesome. It's Thank you. Really good. Um, it isn't a typical post-hardcore record. Do you feel like it's a little bit of a transitional record for you? I do. I mean, I can't remember the last time I made a record that wasn't a transitional record, though. I mean, I never really want to make a record that's like the record everybody wants me to make or the record that I guess I guess less of what everybody wants of me and more what's expected um, I always really just make I mean it's pretty simple like you get together with some friends and you make music you want to hear because I'm a fan of music first and foremost and it turns out being a little transitional every once in a while just because you know as uh, human beings our music tastes evolve um, as people we evolve Things like that, so you know, it's um, yeah, I can't remember the last time I made a record that wasn't like transitional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know artists grow with from record to record, but yeah, it seemed like Devil has a little bit of a hint to where you guys are headed as a whole. Yeah, I don't really know where we're headed, to be honest. I mean, I think nice. our first, I mean, I think right now, what we're trying to do is reconnect with the people that supported us from the beginning. We're trying to gather everybody together and reconnect and say, we're not going anywhere, we're back. Trust us. Trust us enough to be a part of your life again, right? To really open up and let our music impact you. Yeah. Because um, I think some people closed off after the inconsistencies through the past, and I understand that as a fan of music. Um, and once we get everybody together, and everybody's heard this record, then we'll take our next step. But we're, we're busy trying to collect everybody still. That's why we're out here touring. That's why we're out, you know, promoting the record and just trying to get uh, our core fans back. You get a feeling like their diehard Shadows fans are following you and they're coming back on board. Yeah, I mean, there's always a group of people that back what I do, anyways. Yeah. Right, like always, and that's amazing. Like I don't take that for granted in any way. So if I if I say it lightly, I, I don't mean to. Um, but. The numbers are growing, and we're seeing older Chiros fans um, come out for nostalgic reasons and leave with uh, a new inspired um, excitement for this band. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at the end of every set, um, I like to just say, run and tell your friends, Chiros is back. And that's kind of the purpose of this tour, you know. Um, so, uh, outside of promoting Devil, you know, Devil is a... Is, um, the, the stepping stone, it's a record that we're all proud of, um, but it really is a stepping stone for what's next for Chiodos, and hopefully that's, um, you know, a solid future and, and good connection with our fans, and uh, continue to make honest, passionate, raw rock music. It's been a couple years, or been quite a few years, since you've seven. written a Chiodos record. Yeah, Does it feel like years. a bit of a homecoming? like <clears throat> Somewhat, in the terms of, like, uh, making music with, the dudes I went to high school with, yeah. you know, so it's homecoming in that way, and at the same time, I'm not going to forget what happened, like, when we separated and the yeah. time apart, and hopefully they won't, and together we can use our experiences to, to prepare, better prepare for the future, you know, um, that way when those old habits do break through, because they do, I mean, if you've ever been in a relationship, you understand that some time apart is beautiful, but the moment you get back together, sometimes old habits reform, and you can either uh, choose to communicate and work through them, or you can let them take hold. And uh, that's not something we're willing to do, because we don't want to let this thing fall apart again. Did that time away, other projects, give you a little bit different insight? Um, when it comes to your writing, etc.? Writing, yeah. Yeah, writing for sure. Because um, that stuff's a little bit, a lot of that stuff's a little bit different vibe. It's yeah. It's a different feel from what Chiodo, most Chiodos fans would be used to. Yeah, like the drugs record? Yeah, drugs and uh, Cinematic Sunrise, stuff like that, where it's just, yeah. it's a little bit different. Yeah, I mean, well, Cinematic I recorded when I was still in Chiodos. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, as far as like, well, there's two answers that I have for this. So as far as like the projects go, and the difference between them, all it is is I get in a group, uh, I get in uh, a room with a group of my friends, and then we make some music. And depending on the people that are there, it sounds different, right? True. And um, 
And that's all really it is. I don't really want to call them projects. I don't want to call them side projects or things like that. I mean, it's just, I like making music with my friends and labels want to put it out and brand it and I have to sell it somehow because it enables what it is that I do as an artist. It continues me to make art, right? Yeah. So, so that being said, um, I gained a lot of confidence when I was writing. Uh, it started out, drugs started out with me and John Feldman. We just wanted to write a record together. That's all we wanted. John and, Feldman um, writes a lot. Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. Um, and, you know, we, uh, I really wanted him to do the next Chiodos record, which is how Thermacare came about. Yeah. Um, and uh, the label and the management didn't want that. And I said, well, this is my next record. I want to make this record with John. Um, and then what happened happened. Yeah. So, um, you know, I gained a lot of confidence in writing with John. Uh, I, I was shown that I can do this. And then the other drugs members came on board and they added their own little flavor to it and it became something more than just John and I. But it gave me a lot of confidence, man. Like I was able to, to sit down with my acoustic guitar and say, okay, these vocal melodies are great. This is what I want to hear underneath it. Now I want to hear someone else's perspective and I want to show them my vision and have uh, together walk down this, this kind of path. So it helped. What would you say some of the... Uh Biggest a aspects of you changing, growing as a writer since the first Chiodo record. Oh my Chiodo gosh! Records. I know how to write songs now. Yeah. I'm not faking it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right? You fake it until you make it. Pretty much. When you're a kid, like you are a product of your influence, so you look to your idols for inspiration. But at the same time, you don't really know what you're doing. You just chase what feels good. And live is where we like really demolished when we were first starting out. You know, so. I'd say it's less towards the, the live focused, uh, you know, the, the live version, and it's more on a focused stru song structure, what's best for the song itself, um, lyrically, uh, melody-wise. Um, I think we have a greater use of dynamics. I think we uh, use our chord changes much smarter um, in a much more intelligent way, and I think that um, we are capable of writing a progressive record, but sometimes it's harder to write something more simple than a progressive record. So, uh, Devil was was created throughout all that. All that. Are there any habits or routines you picked up along the way that have helped you grow? And as a writer, yeah. Any routines you get into when you like to write certain times or get out of some things that maybe aren't the most productive when it comes to writing. Um. I don't really like to share a lot of what I'm doing, yeah. right? Like, I don't want to share, like, parts that I'll write or things like that because when you share them with people, they tell you what they think. And it's like touching the paper before the ink dries, yeah. you know? So I try, yeah. yeah. So um, I kind of am a bit standoffish during the writing process. Um, so that's a habit, probably. Um, and I do it kind of without even knowing I do it, too. Like, I, I don't purposely say, like, oh, I'm ignoring this call because they're going to ruin my art. I just say, I'm in, I'm in the vibe. I can't do this right now, you know? Like, yeah. my creative thing is kind of taking me there. Um, other than that, it's a lot of exercise. It's like going to the gym. Like, every time you write a song, it feels a little weird at first. It, like, if you've gone a while without doing it, the more you do it, the more comfortable and confident you feel. And then you start working towards focus goals, just like in the gym. You strike me as somebody that writes a lot. Do you spend a lot of time writing, or do you not spend enough amount of time writing? Um, I do. I spend a lot of time writing. I spend, um, uh, especially right now, is been a time a dry period for me as far as writing goes. I'll still write down lyrics every day, but and maybe that's more than other people. Or I'll pick up a guitar and write a guitar part a week or something, right? But right now, my energy is on being a good leader for these guys, um, being uh, the best human being I can be. So writing is kind of taking a back seat. Um, and I have to maintain my relationships that I built outside of this world, right? Um, so that with the moment I go home from tour, I am not just left with myself and my memories of tour. Yeah. Um, and all that takes a lot of effort. So right now my focus is on all that. Um, but I write a lot and uh, what I do now is almost in preparation for writing. It's almost like I'm uh, gathering nuts for hibernation or something. Yeah. And uh, Stephen King said, if you want to be a writer, read a lot. That's the best way. And uh, so I read a lot. I soak in inspirations. I 
challenge myself in different parts of my life, and I try and evoke different emotions and become a, you know, a broader, more round out, rounded out person, and uh, soak in as much inspiration as I can when I'm not writing, and that's the phase I'm in right now. But when it comes time to write, it, that's my life, you know, art. So, when it comes to recordings, recording, you guys don't really tend to stick with producers. You you move around a lot. Mm -hmm. Is that a uh, to get uh, fresh outside opinions, so you don't start right, start getting in those trends where you're making the same records over and over again, or? I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, I don't think it was too much of like a conscious decision. We yeah. never, I mean, when we made All Is Well, we made it for what, like $10,000, like no one thought it had a chance, like Equal yeah. Vision was barely on board, you know, like um, they told our A&R guy, if you could sign one band, then this is gonna be it. and. He took a chance, and then we ended up doing well. Bone Palace, you know, we were the vets coming in, uh, the the new, young, like, up-and-coming band that had some success, but had a little bit of experience, right? Um, so we kind of did what we wanted artistically with it. I think we choose our producers based on the record that we're making. Uh, we know what the record's going to sound like, um, and we, or we know what we want the record to sound yeah. like. And we just choose producers that best serve that, that vision. What we wanted to do this time, there's nothing on Devil that's fake. From the French horns, the champagne glass breaking, the door opening and closing, the weird voices. Yeah, there's a lot of ambient stuff. and yeah, that's undertone type all stuff. Real, yeah. All violins, all cellos, all harp, everything's real. And um, David Botcher was the best person to get us there. You know, we wanted to create a record. I feel like a lot of this um, uh, alternative uh, genre has been... Uh, kind of the, the soul has kind of been sucked out of it. The feeling is gone from a lot of the music because um, it's over focused on melodies, and that is the definition of pop music to me. Yeah. Right. So we wanted to do something that was not completely shined with auto tune. We wanted something vulnerable, honest, and raw and real. And David Botcher gave us our best chance to do that. Does that make it a little tougher during the first start stages of For sure. like pre pro and demos when you're? Kicking stuff back and forth, trying to feel out a producer, because I mean, every one of them is different. They all have their right. nuances and their strong points and weak points. Right. Yeah, I mean, it makes it a little weird. Like, you have to, I mean, I have trust issues as it is, <laughs> just yeah. that, you know, and like I think most people do, but like, um, I, I have some pretty big ones, and I have to really trust them, my producer. And um, it took, it was a learning curve with Dave and I, you know, it took a couple of weeks for us to understand one another. Once we understood it, it, it gelled perfectly. I wouldn't be surprised if we made another record with David Bottrell. Break the cycle. Yeah, we'll see. We'll are, see. You, are you the kind of artist, musician that needs one of those strict, by the book, deadline type producers, or do you just would rather have somebody that lets you bounce ideas off and I like to steer you rather than just both. like yeah both because I myself am one of those like I'm 15 minutes early pretty much for everything I do right except for when I'm on tour and I'm doing interviews yeah <laughs> um, but yes. in in like like life like if I'm going to get coffee and I have a meeting at whatever I'll be there 15 minutes before right like I'll, I'm always on time I'm a deadline schedule kind of guy I find that you know I, I can make better use of my time around it um, and I don't feel like, I don't like wasting my time, right? So, um, I like having someone to bounce ideas off of, but at the same time, I, I create enough deadlines for myself, but I still need someone to keep me in check, right? So I think that's that's probably the best, especially with this group of guys, because there's only a couple of us that are really strict about that, the rest of us are just completely free, wandering aimlessly all the time, so. <laughs> you hit the studio with a shitload of material, or you like to save a little bit of wiggle room in the studio so you can write and tweak a lot of stuff in there. We write and tweak a lot of stuff, but we come with as many ideas as possible. This time we actually had an opportunity to do so. Uh, another problem I have with the rock music industry is um, the fact that because of the shift in the, the rock music economy, right? The, yeah. the shift, um, because of that, in order for musicians to only be musicians and not baristas in their off time, they have to tour. Yeah. And I think that touring has taken over what the album should be doing. Writing, creating. I think that, uh, you know, nowadays people tour for two, three years on a record and then spend a month or two writing and recording it. 
I think it should be the other way around uh, yeah. for the sake of music. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, I think if people had a, a, a decent amount of time to actually, like, I mean, even take six months. I mean, last time, you know, only big bands take six months to write and record a record, right? Like, yeah. you don't hear young bands doing it. They have a month or two. Yeah. And um, I think that's hurting music um, in general. And we were fortunate enough to not have that put on us. Um, we took our time with this. People wanted us to put it out, but when you're creating something timeless, you don't worry about the, you know, the, the instant gratification of it all. And um, so we just saddled down, took our time, and, and wrote a record. But it was, um, the more time, the better, yeah. I think. So the, in that, the more material, the better. From Devil, what are a couple tracks that, that you think you're most proud of or meant the most to you? Now that they're finished and changes every day, they all mean so much to me. Yeah. Um, what one sucks? Not just kidding. Keep going. None of them suck. Not just kidding. I mean, the the one that's probably my least favorite is probably a big fan favorite. Expensive conversations is probably my least favorite right now. Um, only because I don't hear the like musical dynamics, the classical thing that I want. It's just yeah, right. Um, big punch in the face. Um, but I'd say three a.m is probably one of my favorites. Um, I think it's a nice evolution, but it's still Chiodos. Yeah. And uh, lyrically, I'm really proud of that one, because um, I think that's the most honest I've been about my flaws as a human being, uh, without hiding it in metaphor metaphors and, and uh, you know, different literary references. I am everything that's normal, like, I don't know, it sticks out to me. It's, it's a very, it's almost like a, like a three minute, discography, best of, yeah. show those, you know what I mean? It's, I the, it's a ride, you know what I mean? It gives yeah. a little bit of almost every stage in your musical career, it's in that song. I completely agree. Yeah. I agree, and I I love the lyrics of that song, too. We're not playing it on this tour, so it's taking a backseat, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's something that um, I'm really proud of, too. I, I love that song. I think that's, like, the perfect... Um, I mean, we ended it, we ended the record with yeah. that track because we wanted people to listen to what it had to say, and that's what we wanted to resonate with them. We wanted that message, the, you know, the last thing that's repeated a million times is I swear I'm different now at the end of the record, so. Was a new album on a new label something you, you felt like you had, it had to happen so you could put some things behind you and yeah, move absolutely. forward? Yeah, everything had to, had to be different this time around. My guys are like really loyal guys, so that was difficult to do. Um, but coming in, I kind of had just some specifications, things that I wanted and needed if we were going to do this again. Um, and it's important that I stand up for myself in those ways, you know. So I'm happy in our in what it is that we do. Um, so you know, I wanted uh, pretty much an entire new team. Just wanted to go in and. That way there's no baggage from the past constantly rearing its head. Like um, if you get together with an ex-girlfriend and she has the same friends that constantly remind you of what happened. It's just like, let us you're never going to let me move past it. So that's what was needed. What would you say have been some of the biggest hurdles you've had to overcome and survive to survive and flourish in this fickle business? <sighs> I had to get sober. Yeah. That was the biggest one for me. Um, I had to go to rehab, and I mean, I tried to get sober for like maybe like five, six years, but uh, until I really went to rehab and really just set everything aside, I wasn't able to do it. So that um, a big one for me this time around was after I got clean, I had to really start taking some real inventory in my life. I had to really look at who I was and what I could be. So I had to stop womanizing, um, and that was really important for me, really, really big for me. Um, because it gives me confidence knowing that, you know, I'm being the best me I can today. You know what I mean? I don't yeah. go to bed uh, bummed at yeah. myself anymore or living in that regret. And that's that's really important for me because I have um, a big responsibility with the platform that I built for myself. There's a lot of kids. There's a lot of older people that, that look to me for inspiration. And I the last thing I want to do is let them down. Um, so I'm really trying to take responsibility for that platform at this point in my life. And... Those things, I think, um, staying humble, I've always been humble, but I haven't known how to show it because I've been so insecure. Yeah. Um, 
And the more secure I get with myself, the more confident I get in myself, the more I can show vulnerabilities. And I think that's the best way to show someone you're humble is to be vulnerable. And um, so that's, that is uh, another big one for me. Uh, one last one. Yeah. You guys have a pretty big break in the tour schedule after mm -hmm. this tour in the UK. Any plans or just plan on taking some time off? And I think we're talking about taking some time off just a little bit so we can enjoy the summer. We've been going pretty hard since about February on this record, just trying to push it out, get it ready. You know, London, Japan, uh, London actually twice, Japan, um, and then the States all over. So uh, in promoting the record, we, we took a lot of time, but... We're only going to get up like a month off, and then we have another tour, and I'd love to tell you that I get shit from everybody. So Yeah, um, no, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah but good. it'll it'll be out soon, very, very soon. Yeah, uh, I'll get it. So, so and that's, um, that's a tour that's going to be at the end of the summer. I think it'll be a little bit of a surprise for people, but also like, oh yeah, that makes sense kind of tour, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious now. It'll be good, man. I'm looking forward to it, so. Nice. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Thank you very much for your time.